Welcome to Framework Fortune. I'm your host, Ben, and today we have our good friend from the UK, Liam from Confident in Crypto. If you missed the last episode of Portfolio Power Up that he was on, go back and check that out. And also go check out his channel, Confident in Crypto. Liam, how are you doing, buddy? Doing good, mate. Doing very good, thanks. Good to be back on, on with you. Yeah, be good. yeah, man, for sure. So a lot of stuff going on in the crypto world. It's pretty much all the markets. Uh, but the big story now is the NFTs. Oh, I know. I know. They're, they're everywhere, everywhere you look. There yeah. <laughs> seems to be another NFT being created. And, uh, you know, it's a, a trend that started last year, really, the NFT trend. You, you know, it was a little bubble at first. It bubbled up. And then it kind of died down, and this year it's really just kind of come into its own. So yeah, I mean the the trend's done incredibly well so far. I, I was trying to get into it a little bit because I was very interested about the land concept, the digital real estate. Yeah. Uh, but the problem I kept running into was to buy any of this stuff. The gas fees were so high. Yeah, that's that's the thing that you don't really realize until you actually use. Uh, Ethereum, which is where most of the NFTs are on. So that's the blockchain they all reside on. And yeah, the, the fees are crazy high at the moment because the demand is so high for uh, transactions on Ethereum. So you get the high fees. But I, I think soon, you know, we're going to see those fees die down. And then it's really a case of, of you know, how wild does, does the market go? How much more is, you know, done in terms of NFTs and how many more people come into the other areas as well? Now, I did see there was like a, a couple of different uh, blockchain companies or whatever you want to call them that are trying to work along Ethereum, like Loopring, I think it's trying yes. to bring cheaper gas fees uh, to the forefront here. Do you think they're going to be able to do that successfully on the level that Ethereum has or maybe not Loopring, but another one that you know of? Yeah, so um, Loopring's just a uh, basically a layer two exchange. So uh, if they get enough liquidity, it could be a good option for trading uh, tokens on Ethereum. So uh, a lot of the cryptocurrencies are on Ethereum. But actually, uh, I think one of the most interesting things coming up uh, is something called optimism uh, and something called optimistic roll-ups. It seems to be uh, the big layer two solution that everyone's talking about. And, and what it actually is, it's just taking transactions uh, and, and either taking them off chain, that's what a layer two solution is, doing it on a separate chain mm -hmm. or, or doing them in a way where it's where the fees are a lot cheaper and it takes up a lot less uh, space on the Ethereum blockchain. So uh, optimism is the one that everyone's looking towards to uh, essentially be integrated with the, you know, the big the big um, applications. So, you know, you use Uniswap. Uh, or you you probably had a look at Uniswap to to buy tokens. Yeah, I looked at Uniswap and it was expensive as hell with those gas fees. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem is, like, all of the liquidity for these these tokens are on Uniswap. You know, the liquidity is not on these other exchanges. So Uniswap is still the the biggest uh, decentralized exchange. So what you really need to get cheap fees is to to have these big uh, DeFi applications on Ethereum use layer two solutions and optimism's the one I believe that, that Uniswap's sort of looking towards. So that that will be the game changer. You know, all the other solutions are good, but not to the scale of of dealing with Uniswap and, and the big applications, which is what you need. I think it's an issue in the short term, but in the long term I, I think innovation will sort all this out. And because this is still a new sector or, or whatever you want to call it, you know, it's like Yeah this is still in the early stages and you have a lot of people still arguing that cryptocurrencies and blockchain is just mania and hype, which of course some of it could be mania and hype, but I think that mm. this is something that's not going to go away. I think this technology is here to stay and as it gets better and better, it'll get more valuable. The NFT thing though, how much do you think that's just hype right now? You think it's overhyped? Uh, yes, yeah. I mean, ev everything gets overhyped at some point. It, it, uh, we see it all the time when we when we trade and when we invest. You know, you get you get this this slow this growth this like steady growth. It's almost like a a straight line, and you get this like bubble that goes much quicker than the steady growth that's actually happening. The fundamentals, mm -hmm. and that bubble is the extra excitement, and then eventually it will crash down. You know, and come back to the mean, but the mean will be a lot higher than than where it is maybe now or where it was six months ago. So it's always going to be getting bigger but 
yeah, I think there is a lot of uh, air in the in the NFT space at the moment, but there's a lot coming out that's really solid, and and I do think they're here to stay. I don't think they're gonna gonna be a flash in the pan. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I think some of the NFTs, like especially in the gaming sector, I think they're going to run into the same issues that we have now with gaming, and that's people's short attention spans. So like Decentraland might be, or OVR might be like the big one now, but another one could just come out six months later and be better and everybody run to that one. So I can see I can see how NFTs now, especially with gas fees being as high as they are, people trying to invest in some of these gaming platforms and then getting the rug yanked out from under them because they paid so much in gas fees. And when that comes down, you know, when, or when the price of those NFTs, like, like I said, if Decentraland disappears, you know, they might have paid 115 for a ten dollar piece of land because of gas fees, and then yeah. they might end up losing most of their money on that just because of the gas fees. Yeah, I think the gas fees uh, are kind of like a barrier to entry. Mm-hmm. They're kind of, uh, they, they, they're kind of, it's almost like a gatekeeper for retail and, and av- everyday people like me or like you to actually come in and buy NFTs or even just buy altcoins or cryptocurrencies that are on Ethereum. So yeah, that there is that side of, of the gas fees making it much more difficult to get uh, a good investment for, for the everyday person, but also, and you were saying about like Decentraland might not be around in five years or it might not be around in a year. Uh, and it's not Decentraland specifically. It's probably one of the most established projects in the NFT space. But you're right. There's so many different projects right now that only some of them are really going to come out mm-hmm. on top. Um, and when that happens, uh, you know, that process that that will actually weed out a lot of projects that will uh, eventually become valueless and and that's true in the gaming sector especially uh, but it's also true i think for for the art nfts you yeah. know as well the the collectibles because a lot of collectibles the market's not going to find valuable so once this hype disappears a, a lot of these collectibles will probably become valueless and then you'll just have the the real you know the collectibles that the market or the people have said these are good these are collectibles you want to keep and they will retain value a bit like pokemon cards you know they still have value today. Oh, yeah. The old po- Pokemon cards are worth a lot of money oh, yeah. if they're in good condition. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So it's the same kind of principle. But most of the Pokemon cards are, are worth nothing if they're like a common one or, mm-hmm. you know, other types of gaming cards aren't worth as much. And that's what you'll probably find uh, in that sector of, of the NFT space. Now, how, how would you answer those people who say that, the difference is it's digital and it's not actually there. So even though there's a signature on the NFT and it's rare, there's only one of that supply, but it's not yeah. an actual uh, anything that you can you can hold. It's not the same as buying an actual basketball card, or like a Michael Jordan rookie card or something like that. Because you can like for art, for example, you can just copy the picture and have the picture. Mm-hmm. So, like, is the is the signature behind that really adding that much value to this? So, uh, I think I think the the signature and the provability, essentially, that the NFT is the original piece. Uh, I think that actually creates more value uh, than than well, maybe not more, but at least the same level of value as you have when you have an original piece of artwork or or an original collectible card that's physical. Um, what we have to realize now is like me and you, uh, we're still quite ahead compared to people older than us, but actually we're quite far behind compared to the younger generations in terms of moving over to a, a digital world. Mm-hmm. You know, everything is becoming online now and everything is becoming uh, digital. So people are a lot more comfortable now, especially the younger generations. Uh, they're a lot more comfortable with, with dealing with everything being digital. They don't need physical products. Uh, so I think really this this move to a digital collectible isn't isn't that big a deal. I think they're still going to be valuable. I think some people won't get it, but the truth is this signature, this provability that you can prove it's the original piece of art will give that value because it, it's like it's like any collectible card. You know, you can replicate that collectible card if you have the right equipment to to do that. Yeah. But it will be it won't be worth what the original is because it isn't the original you know 
collectible card. It's not that original collectible Charizard, that Pokemon card. Even though you've replicated it almost perfectly, if someone can prove there's a slight difference, that replica you've made is valueless. Yeah. It's exactly the same with, with NFTs, except for it's much easier to prove whether an NFT is the original or not. Yeah, because it's all on the blockchain. It's all in those in the data <laughs> ledger. The collectible art side is is a little sketchy right now, I think. You know, we've got Beeple, who's kind of the uh, front runner here. And he's got some cool stuff. I mean, the Shrek laying naked in front of a bunch of weird cult-looking people, that's an interesting uh, art piece for sure. I don't know if I'd have that hanging in my living room. But, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know if his painting is that one that sold for $69 million. Do you think that's really worth yeah, I know. $69 million? I mean, I, I wouldn't buy it for sixty nine million, but I'm not an art collector, right. so that's that's the one thing I would say. You know, I I I, I don't collect art, but people pay a lot for art, and I don't understand that. You know, I don't understand what makes art valuable, why they pay for it, but they do. Uh, so I think probably it is worth something like sixty nine or a million, or however much you said it was. I can't remember the exact figure, but uh, I know it's one of the first authentic like legitimate nfts created by an artist that's that's had some success so i think the logic is where it's one of the first of its kind uh when you go down 10 years in the future or or maybe even 100 years you know this is one of the first nfts to be made that's this type of nft you know an artist with all his works on up until this point and that has some historical significance right you know, that's what makes collectibles valuable. It's not just the, especially with the art as well, it's not just the art itself, is it? It's also the, the collectability, the historical meaning or value. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look at coins, collectible coins, they're worth something because they have historical value. You know, the collectible coins don't usually have uh, any sort of material that's worth anything in them. Maybe like a little bit of silver is worth maybe like $30, but it's, it's actually the historical value they have the significance and the nfts we're seeing now being created at this point in time are probably you know assuming that ethereum continues long into the future or these nfts survive uh, if ethereum goes away and something else takes its place that they're, they're going to be historical they're going to be groundbreaking these are the original nfts made and they're going to have more value than an nft made in two years or five years yeah I kind of get that. It's kind of like with gaming systems, you know, when the Atari came out, it was like everybody's like, oh, Atari, this is cool. And now we've gotten all the way up to the Xbox X and the PS5. Those old Ataris, if you still have one that's working, is actually worth a lot of money because that was groundbreaking, exactly. you know, turning point in technology. So I could see that. I could see that for the for the people painting. I, I still don't know if $69 million is a good price tag or not, but... You know, it's a it's a lot, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> Especially because you know you can't really get any. I mean, well, there's there's an argument to be had, I guess, about the paintings because you do have the digital picture frames now, where you can upload mm -hmm. a digital picture and hang it on your wall, and you can change it or have multiple pictures that scroll or even a graphic uh, that plays out all the time. So I think as as that yeah, exactly. I think as that catches on two that will also bring some more validity to the nft art market but i'm i'm kind of like you i'm not big in investing in art personally no i'm i'm exactly the same you know and and uh, i've dabbled in collectibles you know i've i've invested sporadically in in some Yu -Gi -Oh cards that are either in the current way the game's played but also that are collectible and the collectibles always have more value in the long run than mm -hmm. Uh, something that's got utility in the short term so i think that goes into art as well you know yeah and there's quite a bit of tcgs uh trading card games on blockchain yeah. have you looked at any of those like gods unchained or any any of that uh, actually funnily enough i uh i played gods unchained for about two weeks and then uh then i stopped i mean they've got a lot of work to do to catch up with the off-chain games you know like hearthstone for example which is I think the biggest or one of the biggest trading card games. Uh, and I have a friend who uh, he got into the top 100 players. Or it might have been top 1,000 players in Europe in Hearthstone. Oh, nice. And I was trying to get him 
over to Gods on Chain because I thought, you know, he's good enough to probably profit from the, the NFTs he gets in the game and he can sell on. Mm -hmm. uh, but he just said the game had a lot of work to do to get to the level that Hearthstone was at, even just the animations and stuff. But yeah, I've tried a few of them out and uh, I think there's potential there. I, I love the idea of owning the uh, items you have in the game and being able to sell that item to someone else. I think it gives a lot more power to the players and uh, I'm sure they're going to come up with other ways that players can monetize themselves. Uh, like in Axie Infinity yeah. that you were discussing in one of your videos, actually, which is quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. Axie, Axie I think, has some potential, but my concerns with it being kind of the uh, Pokemon-based type style game is that when Pokemon decides to get on blockchain, if they ever do, that's going to just blow Axie away because, you know, it's kind of like a knockoff Pokemon. It's just on the mm. blockchain right now. Now, maybe, maybe Nintendo will never, ever go to the blockchain. That is a possibility. Um... You think they will at some point? That, that's surely, what I'm saying. If it becomes, you know. Yeah, that's that's mm. what I'm that's what I'm thinking is. I mean, we're seeing a lot of adoption all over different sectors of blockchain technology just because of the data collecting that it does. It's a lot more efficient, I think, uh, with blockchain for data organization than it is any other systems that we currently have. So I could I could see eventually Pokemon going there, and that would probably destroy Axie. But I do I do like the idea of a decentralized game like that where the players can actually make money for playing the game. You know, that kind of Yeah, exactly. That kind of brings a lot of potential into the future world of gaming where people don't have to work a job, they can actually just get paid to be a gamer or just get paid to be an artist, which it exists exactly. it exists already, but it's just not decentralized, you know. You got to work for. It's not to the same level. Yeah, you have these middlemen that exactly. take a cut of the money, and that's what blockchain is essentially all about. It's removing these middlemen uh, or intermediaries, if you want to be a bit more technical of your speech. But it, it basically removes these people that take a cut, whether that's in finance, whether that's in gaming. Uh, or any other sector, if you can use blockchain effectively to remove those intermediaries or those middlemen, uh, it actually just allows for for creators or, or people who, like you say, are maybe gamers, uh, to actually get a bigger cut for what they're they're doing. They get more share in their own their own work essentially. So mm -hmm. I think the the question is going back to what you were saying with with Pokemon coming onto the blockchain, the real question is, uh, will it ever replace uh almost fully decentralized games or or games that are decentralized as far as Axie Infinity? Because uh how decentralized are is a game like Pokemon or like a, a company like Nintendo really going to want to be? Mm. They might be able to use blockchain in some way to better their product, but will they actually be in the same niche uh, where they're giving more control to players or more value to players for, for their time in the game? And I don't know whether they will go that far. They might use it in some way, but it might not be the same sort of decentralized uh, game and infrastructure like we see with Axie, for example. Yeah, I mean, you 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 could be right because I would I would not put my money on EA Sports going to blockchain or one of those type of companies. Nintendo, you know, they're kind of they're one that may would do that, but a lot of the games. Well, I would love to see Rockstar do a, a blockchain game, like a big open world Rockstar. Like you could have that whole economy, like you already have that in Rockstar games, like with the Red Dead Online and Grand Theft Auto Online. But there's just yeah. no real. You're not really making any money by playing. The yeah, game. you don't own anything in exactly. The game, you know, you don't own the cars. You don't own the stocks that you trade in in Grand Theft Auto Five, for example. Yeah. So.